it's been a great few months for Elon Musk and SpaceX. With another Starship launch just around the corner, the company's been landing some insanely lucrative deals with NASA. In fact, NASA and SpaceX have finalized a contract that will see SpaceX's Falcon Heavy launch and deliver the Europa Clipper spacecraft to Jupiter's icy moon. The moon, Europa, is strongly believed to have conditions suitable for supporting life. Could this mission discover the first signs of alien life on another world? The launch is expected to take place sometime in October of 2024 from the Kennedy Space Center Complex 39A. The contract will reportedly cost NASA $178 million, which is quite the bargain compared to the $2.1 billion it would have cost to launch the mission using NASA's Space Launch System rocket, or SLS. It was almost inevitable that SpaceX was going to win this contract. Congress passed a bill in December 2020 giving NASA the freedom to select any commercial space vehicle of their choice as an alternative launch for the mission. Initially, spending bills by Congress for NASA were strictly reserved for the Europa Clipper to launch through the SLS. But because of SLS's high prices, NASA requested the flexibility to work with a commercial launch vehicle. So as soon as the bill was passed, NASA directed the Europa Clipper project to cease all plans to launch the spacecraft through the SLS and instead focus on a launch with a commercial company. NASA would then go on to select SpaceX's Falcon Heavy because they were satisfied that it met all the technical requirements to carry out the mission. One of the reasons why they selected SpaceX is because they placed the Europa Clipper in Category 3 for launch services. This means that the Europa Clipper should be carried on a commercial vehicle that has performed at least three successful launches. This put the Falcon Heavy miles above competing commercial rockets. You see, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy was successfully flown three times, despite not being launched since 2019. Other competing vehicles, such as United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur and Blue Origin's New Glenn, haven't even had their first launches yet. The Falcon Heavy is also more efficient in terms of payload delivery compared to the other rockets. The Falcon Heavy is able to deliver 63,800 kilograms to Earth's lower orbit, while the Vulcan Centaur can deliver 27,200 kilograms, and lastly, the new Glenn can deliver 14,000 kilograms. And in terms of cost per launch, the new Glenn will reportedly cost NASA about $2 billion to launch with them, and the Vulcan Centaur would cost them about $200 million. So it's a no-brainer why NASA went with SpaceX. It's cheaper, more proven, and far more efficient. The only issue with selecting the Falcon Heavy is that it's slightly slower than NASA's SLS. With the SLS, the Europa Clipper would have arrived at Jupiter's moon in less than three years. But with Falcon Heavy, it should arrive at Europa in about five and a half years after it launches. Lately, the United States government has been putting a lot of faith in SpaceX. The Europa Clipper contract is one of several future Falcon Heavy missions with NASA, the Department of Defense, and private commercial clients. In February, for example, NASA awarded SpaceX with contracts to launch the first two modules of the Lunar Gateway. And then in April, they awarded them with the contract to launch the Griffin Lunar Lander that will be tasked with carrying a NASA lunar rover to the moon. If the launch of the Europa Clipper takes place in October of 2024 as planned, it is expected to reach Jupiter's orbit by April of 2030. The probe will then be used to investigate several distinct features of the planet, as well as analyze if it is capable of supporting life. It will capture high-resolution images of Europa's surface to determine the composition and search for signs of ongoing geological activity. It will also measure the thickness of the moon's icy shell, measure the salinity and depth of the moon's oceans, and search for subsurface lakes. But why is the Europa mission specifically so important to NASA scientists? Well, for life in the universe to thrive, it requires three things. Elements like carbon that create complex molecules called organics, a liquid solvent like water, and an energy source. And Europa has all three of these things in abundance. Also, this Jupiter moon looks pretty much the same as ours, but it is covered with an ice shell that is roughly 12 miles thick. So hypothetically speaking, if we replaced our moon with Europa, it would seem the same size in the sky, but much brighter, so much brighter. In fact, with a surface made entirely of ice, this moon would reflect nearly five and a half times the sunlight that our moon does. In terms of position, Europa orbits Jupiter at around 417,000 miles from the planet, and it also orbits the Sun around 500 million miles away. Light from the Sun usually takes about 45 minutes to reach Europa. Because of this massive distance, the light hitting Europa is about 25 times fainter than the light that hits our Moon and Earth. So how does Europa get a sustainable energy source? Well, beneath the subsurface ice, there lies a liquid saltwater ocean that is estimated to be about 100 miles deep with more than twice the amount of water that Earth's combined oceans have. While no sunlight reaches Europa's oceans, it is believed that the waters are heated slightly due to vents on the ocean floor that release heat from the moon's core. As such, scientists strongly believe that life could be found teeming in some of these deep, dark vents. After all, 
we have some similar creatures at the bottom of our seas. Jupiter could also be providing the moon with another source of energy. You see, the planet's magnetic field traps high energy particles from the sun and accelerates them into Europa's ice, which creates molecules important for life, like hydrogen, ammonia, and methane. Once launched in 2024, the Europa Clipper probe is expected to arrive by 2030, marking it as the first dedicated mission to explore a world with a global ocean besides Earth. By finding out whether Europa has the ideal conditions for life, we'll be able to better understand the chances of finding life on other ocean worlds, in our solar system, and the worlds beyond. Now the question is, how will the Europa Clipper collect information? First of all, it will orbit Jupiter instead of Europa directly so that it can spend time outside the moon's intense radiation field. In fact, NASA scientists plan to have the spacecraft occasionally dive through Jupiter's radiation, fly by Europa for data collection, and then exit these intense fields. This strategy will allow Europa Clipper to study the moon for several years rather than days or months. The spacecraft is also constructed with a wide range of science instruments to scan Europa from above and directly sample the moon's atmosphere. A radar instrument will map Europa's ice, while a magnetometer will be used to determine the depth and salinity of the ocean. There will be infrared and color cameras that will allow the probe to analyze the surface in color and search for hot spots where the ocean could be seeping up through the ice shell. NASA has further equipped the probe with spectrometers to assess the composition of the surface and search for any plumes that might be pushing water vapor into space. The Europa Clipper will also be used to search for locations where future space missions might be able to land. One mission under consideration by NASA would be to spend a month on Europa's surface, feeding samples into instruments designed to detect organic materials. Presently, NASA relies on ground-based telescopes to study Europa's surface. That's how they were able to determine that Europa is covered in ice. Through this, they also discovered that beneath the ice crust is an ocean of liquid water or slushy ice. Europa's massive ocean is widely considered the most logical place for life beyond Earth. It's also believed that a passing spacecraft may even be able to sample Europa's ocean without having to land on the moon's surface, because it's possible that Europa's ocean might be leaking into space. However, that doesn't sound like good news for any alien bacteria caught up in one of these. While there have been no plumes observed when the Galileo spacecraft was in the Jupiter system in the 1990s, recent observations using telescopes telescopes such as Hubble have shown that there is a possibility that these thin plumes of water could be ejecting water vapor up to 100 miles above Europa's surface. In fact, in November 2019, an international research team led by NASA announced that they had detected water vapor for the first time directly above Europa's surface. They measured this vapor through the use of a spectrograph from the Keck Observatory in Hawaii, which calculates the chemical composition of atmospheres through the use of infrared light, which is emitted or absorbed. If the plumes do exist, and if their source is traced back to Europa's ocean, then a spacecraft could travel through the plume to sample and analyze it from orbit. Because in essence, we would simply be analyzing the moon's ocean. If we do find life on Europa, it might be in the form of simple microbes or something a little more complex. Also, if we're able to demonstrate that life is able to form independently in two places around the same star, it would then be reasonable to think that life is able to spring up anywhere in the universe fairly easily if the right ingredients for life are present, and that life might be flourishing throughout the galaxy and the universe as a whole. Makes you wonder, could we be a small blip of life in the cosmos where trillions of species exist? Hopefully, Europa could be a key to answering one of humanity's most puzzling questions.